for which values of x will g increase? We are told that here at x is equals to minus 1, we have a turning point. And again here at x is equals to 2, we have another turning point. It should be now easy to see that between minus 1 and 2, that's where our graph g of x is increasing. At minus 1 and exactly at 2, it is neither increasing or decreasing because those are turning points, right? Uh, but then between minus 1 and 2, g of x is increasing. We're saying that g of x is increasing between minus 1 and 2 because we have a positive gradient. So here at 8.1, we're saying that for the values for which g will increase is when x is between minus 1 and 2. And then 8.2 is saying that let's write down the x coordinate of the point of inflection of g. So where is the point of inflection located? The point of inflection is located at the midpoint between the turning points. If you want to find the x coordinate of the point of inflection, you're going to say that x is equals to x1 plus x2 divided by 2. x1 and x2 being the x values of the turning point. We have already established that minus 1 is the x value of a turning point, right? So for x1, we can put minus 1 and then plus x2, the other value of the turning point, which is 2, and then we divide everything by 2. So it should be easy to see here that we're going to have 1 divided by 2, and that's exactly what the x coordinate of our point of in flexion is and now 8.3 right uh, 8.3 is saying that uh, for which values of x will g be concave down so let me differentiate between concave down and concave up first right if it's concave down then the graph is ultimately going down if it looks like this it's concave down and then if it's concave up then the graph is ultimately going up and it looks like that so we say that uh, this is concave down because it's ultimately going down and then this is concave up so this question here is saying for which values of x will g be concave down so we are interested in this part here right uh, for which values of x will g be concave down we're interested in this part right so the concavity of a cubic function changes at the point of inflection so for 8.3 we're saying that when x is greater than 1 divided by 2 that's where our graph will be concave down but when x is less than 1 divided by 2 our graph will be concave up and at x is equals to 1 divided by 2 it is neither concave up or concave down we are at the point of inflection right and then now let's do 8.4 8.4 is saying that if uh, g prime of x is equals to minus 6x squared plus 6x plus 12 uh, determine the equation of g so the equation we're given now uh, we're given that uh, g of x is equals to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx so let's derivate this and see what we get right uh, if we derivate that we're gonna get uh, g prime of x is equals to 3ax squared uh, plus qbx plus c now let's just compare uh, this equation we have here and this equation we have here so now uh, we shall be able to see that minus 6 on the first equation should be equals to 3 multiplied by a and then 6 on the first equation should be equals to 2 multiplied by b and then 12 should be equals to c so what are we saying we're saying that minus 6 should be equals to 3 multiplied by a so it should be easy to see here that a will be equals to minus 6 divided by 3 which is equals to minus 2 and then uh, for b we're saying that uh, 6 should be equals to 2b so it should be easy to see now that uh, b will be equals to 6 divided by 2 which is equals to 3 and then uh, for c we don't have to solve anything right uh, c is equals to 
12. So now uh, our equation uh, g of x, right? Let's not forget that uh, this is our equation uh, g of x here. G of x will be equal to a. a we say that it is minus 2, right? So we have minus 2x cubed uh, plus 2bx, right? Plus 2 multiplied by we say that b is 3, so multiply by 3, x squared, uh, we say in c is 12, so plus 12, x, right, uh, which will just be minus 2, x cubed, uh, plus 6, x squared, plus 12, x, and that's our g of x. 8.5 is saying that uh, let's determine the equation of the tangent to g that has the maximum gradient write down your answer in the form y is equal to mx plus c if we're looking for the equation of a straight line we need two things uh, we need uh, a coordinate and then apart from a coordinate uh, we need the gradient if we have these two then we can have an equation y is equals to mx plus c so how are we going to find the coordinate i want you to realize something here the maximum gradient is at the point of inflection the maximum gradient is at the point of inflection that is always true so we already know that for our coordinate x is equals to one divided by two and then to find y should be pretty much straightforward. We're just going to substitute 1 divided by 2 into g of x. And then for the gradient, we're going to derivate uh, g of x, right? And substitute uh, our coordinate x equals to 1 divided by 2 and get the gradient. So now let's uh, find our y value so that we can have our coordinate. So we have g of 1 divided by 2 being equals to minus 2 let's not forget that uh, we determined the equation in 8.4 right uh, minus 2 multiply by uh, 1 divided by 2 to the 3 plus 6 multiply by 1 divided by 2 plus 12 multiply by 1 divided by 2 and that should be equals to 13 divided by 2 so now we have our y value so here we can say y is equals to 13 divided by 2 uh, now let's substitute uh, 1 divided by 2 into the equation uh, for the gradient of g of x. Uh, let's not forget that we were already given the equation here in 8.4, right? Here's the equation here. So uh, g prime of x will be close to minus 6. The x value is 1 divided by 2. Uh, we square that plus 6. Uh, the x value, 1 divided by 2 again, plus 12. So g prime of x, when x is equal to 1 divided by 2, will be 27 divided by 2. So now back to our equation, y is equal to mx plus c. Uh, our y value is 13 divided by 2. Uh, that is equal to our m, which is 27 divided by 2. Our x is 1 divided by 2 plus c. So now we're just solving for c, and when we're done solving for c, uh, we're essentially done, right? So we're going to have um, 13 divided by 2 minus 27 divided by 2 multiplied by 1 divided by 2, which is equals to c. Uh, so c here is going to be equals to minus 1 divided by 4. So y is equals to 27 divided by 2x minus 1 divided by 4.